Good morning, guys. I am about out of tallow in the kitchen. So I thought I would render the suet that I have in the freezer and take you guys along with me and show you how I make tallow. Though we will not be making tallow bomb today, I'm just gonna be rendering um, the suet into tallow. here is beef kidney fat. So this is just frozen kidney fat and what I'm going to do is cut as much of the meat off of here as possible and uh, cut this into relatively small pieces just with a regular knife. And while I cut this up, I'm going to explain to you guys what tallow is, the rendering process, how I do it, different methods, the benefits of tallow and its uses. So let's get started. I moved the kitchen day to the kitchen table because the lighting is better in here in the mornings. This kidney fat right here is from the same ranch that I get my grass-fed beef from that we order our whole and half cows from. I think I've linked that before in another video, but I will link that company down below. I'm not affiliated anyway. They're just super awesome. I think I'm gonna need a bigger knife. This is pretty frozen. So what is suet? Suet is the hard kidney fat that you find in ruminants, such as cows, sheep, goats, deer. It's also called leaf fat, L-E-A-F. You might actually watch me stab myself in real time. So you can technically render any type of fat from an animal, but suet specifically is referring to that hard, white, crumbly fat surrounding the kidneys and um, the other internal organs and some ruminants. So what is tallow? Tallow is just rendered suet. So this is the fat in its purest form, straight off the animal. The rendering process takes this down to a more shelf-stable, pure form of fat that you can use numerous ways. So what is rendering? Rendering is gonna be the process of using heat to separate the liquid fat from other organic particles, such as the leftover meat and blood that's in here, as well as um, evaporating excess moisture, excess water. So suet is really crumbly and very hard at room temperature. This is frozen right now, but if it were at room temperature, it would be exactly the same way, albeit a little bit easier to crumble apart, but. It's also very waxy and leaves this waxy film all over your fingers. You may prefer to wear gloves if you do this. Um, it's really good for your skin, so it's kind of like cooking with lotion. <laughs> I do, in fact, make lotion out of rendered tallow, which will be a separate video we, we do together after this. So one of the reasons to render suet into tallow is because of its stability on the shelf at room temperature for long periods of time. The reason for its stability is because of its super, super high saturated fat content. It's got, I believe, one of the highest saturated fat contents of all animal fats, and it sits only slightly under the saturated fat content of coconut oil. These saturated fats not only make it solid at room temperature, but also make it less prone to oxidation. And oxidation, of course, causes rancidity. Now, I'm not here to get into uh, good fats versus bad fats, health to base saturated fats, unsaturated fats, meh. What I can tell you is that tallow is super rich in vitamins, all the fat soluble vitamins, as well as omega-3s and omega-6s. Some of the benefits for using tallow is that it makes a great dairy-free cooking substitute. Now it's not suitable for all cooking endeavors. You don't really want to use it in replace of butter in like soft, baking recipes like cupcakes. Uh, it has a slightly beefy aroma and a deep flavor, 
like, well, a deeper flavor than butter. So it's not really good for those light pastries where you want something sweet. But everything else, it's fantastic in. And it just adds this depth of flavor to your meals that I can't really describe unless you try it yourself. But another awesome benefit is that you can make it yourself. I mean, I don't grow olive trees or have an olive oil press. I can't make a whole lot of my own cooking fats unless I, of course, get dairy goats and, and make butter, et cetera, et cetera. But this I can do because even if I can't raise my own cattle, I can purchase local grass-fed beef that's organic, free range, and then render that cooking fat down myself. So if if you wanted to be more self-sustainable, that is a way to do it, as well as a healthier cooking fat to have on hand. And using this healthier fat is also a benefit because you're not purchasing and using already rancid seed oils from your supermarket shelf. But that's a whole different topic. <laughs> and then another great benefit is that it has so many uses. There are tons of traditional uses. Tallow was the original ingredient in soaps, and then of course in skincare, it is really, really beneficial for your skin and I use it all the time. It is my go-to lotion and it completely changed my life when I started using it. It just has so many uses. You can also use it as like a, a leather conditioner, a waterproofer for boots. It's so cool. Okay, but real quick, let me cut up this because I think it's a little too hard to do it safely while I'm trying to talk to you guys. <laughs> Give me one second. I wanted to say a quick word on sourcing grass-fed beef tallow. If you're already sourcing grass-fed meat from a butcher, then absolutely ask them if they sell the kidney fat from their animals. Some butchers may even give it to you for free if they usually throw it away or don't have any customers for it. But of course, your most economical source is going to be local first. Um, I have produced good quality grass-fed, grass-finished beef tallow from a company called Azure Standard. If you've not heard about Azure Standard, it's a bulk organic foods co-op and I will link their website below. I'm not affiliated with them in any way. I just really love their products. I do use them quite often. Um, one of these days I'll have to show you a bulk foods haul that I've done from Azure. You may also try Butcher Box, though I have never purchased from them. It is not usually this difficult to cut, but I also usually keep it in my kitchen freezer and not in the deep freeze in the garage. So I highly recommend that you let it thaw out a little before you try and cut into it. It can be kind of dangerous to work with. <laughs> Look at this vulture just waiting for me to drop something. We're almost done. It is slowly thawing out while we're sitting here, so that's good. I haven't cut myself yet. Knock on wood. This would be a good reason to get a meat cleaver. If I bought myself a meat cleaver, what are the chances I would chop a finger off? You should comment down below. I think they're pretty high. When Chase moved in here, he brought a new set of knives. And I, I hadn't owned a new set of knives in, in years. And he soon found out and became pretty convinced that the only reason I never chopped a finger off was because my knives were so dull. <laughs> sure enough. You see, it's not that I'm bad necessarily with weapons. I'm actually fairly good with a lot of weapons. I'm just careless. Kind of. Chase calls me chaotic. Most of this is is fat, so that's that's actually pretty good. I've gotten some leaf fat pieces where there's quite a bit of meat, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I mean, it's, it's just meat, but it does cut down on the amount of tallow you get at the end. So what I'm doing is just breaking these into, I don't know, that size chunks. They can be smaller, they can be bigger. Um, you want them to be relatively the same size because you want them all to render down in the amount, the same amount of time. If you cut them into smaller pieces or if you're using a food processor, 
the time to render may be less, though I'm not too worried about it. I do have a food processor that I could use for this. Um, I would just rather clean one knife than clean that food processor after <laughs> all of this. <laughs> Okay, so we have our suet all cut up into manageable pieces. I like... <laughs> the method we're gonna be using is the crock pot method or the sl or slow cooker method. This is the most, probably the most hands-off approach you can take to rendering suet. There are two other methods you can do it stove top or in the oven. I suppose you could do it over a fire too. I've never done that though. But the basic goal of rendering is to evenly heat all of the fat inside so that it melts down into liquid form at relatively the same pace. You want to do this low and slow. You do not want to burn the tallow or caramelize it. It's not necessarily bad, although overcooking oil can lead to rancidity but it will give it a deeper flavor. But the goal of rendering tallow is to make it as neutral as possible, whether that's for cooking or especially um, for lotions and soaps. Now there is, a, there is a different method that I've seen and read about. It's an older, more traditional method of making the tallow whiter, like making the final product whiter and um, have less beef aroma. That involves the use of water during the rendering method. I'm not going to show you guys that. Uh, the goal is to get as much water out of this product as possible. And there are specific ways to do it with water to ensure that you do it right. I don't know them. I'm not going to teach them. We're just gonna put this tallow, no other additives, straight into the pot and start it on low. So this is cutting at about the mark I would tell you to stop filling it. This is almost at the halfway point. And if you put it, if you put much more suet in here, um, this top isn't going to melt down as fast as the bottom and you're gonna end up caramelizing the bottom before the top is ever rendered. So try not to fill it maybe more than one third or one half of your crock pot. If I had more than this, I would just get a bigger crock pot. But it looks good. So I set the crock pot on low for 10 hours. It is not gonna take 10 hours. You are gonna wanna come back in here every once in a while, check on it, maybe stir it, make sure it's not burning on the bottom, that there's lots of circulation in there. Don't leave the lid off too for too long. It does lose heat that way. But other than that, it's pretty hands off. If you wanted to, right when you set it, you could leave, run some errands, come back. Of course, this is dependent on how much tallow you're rendering. But comparatively to the stovetop method or in the oven, you do have to check on it a little bit less. So we're gonna let that do its magic and I will see you guys in about two hours. Okay guys, quick update. We are a couple hours in. So I initially put it on low because I had some chores and some errands to run so I wasn't gonna be around to monitor it. But when I came home, I changed it to high because I was gonna be here to monitor and, um, and stir it around. So let me show you what it looks like right now. It's almost done. I would say it's got hmm, maybe an hour, a little bit more left. You can see these parts right here that are turning crispy. Some of these parts in here are, are part meat and will never fully render down. Obviously there's still a lot of fat here to render down. But basically I can't tell you exactly how long it will take because you're just gonna have to monitor it. You're gonna have to monitor the temperature to make sure you aren't crisping um, more than just like really small pieces. You don't wanna be crisping really large pieces that still have a lot to break down. And just the rate that your particular fat is breaking down. Also something to take into account is equipment. So my crock pot may work inefficient compared to yours. You never know. Basically, the rule of the game is just watch your tallow and make sure it's not browning excessively. <laughs> All right guys, so we are back with our rendered beef tallow. And here it is. 
So what we are gonna do now is we are gonna strain it using this cheesecloth that I have and we're gonna strain it using cheesecloth and that funnel right there and I'm just gonna strain it into a mason jar. This tallow I'm gonna be using for cooking because I'm almost out and I need that sooner than I need lotion. So when I do the next video, it will be from a new rendered tallow jar, but it's still really hot. And this is the part of the process where I do use gloves. So I pulled it out of the crock pot and set it on this cooling rack just to cool it off a little bit. Unfortunately, it needs to remain hot when you strain it because if it cools, it solidifies to room temperature. So this really can't be avoided. I'm sure it can. There are presses and ways to do this. I just have my hands in a cheesecloth, so. So I've got a clean and dry, which is important. You want a dry mason jar. You want to avoid moisture in this final process as much as possible. And then really the amount of cheesecloth you use is personal preference depending on how filtered you want it. If you get to too many layers of cheesecloth, it becomes really difficult to filter and you will be here forever. You can use um, a wire filter as well, like a, like a mesh strainer. This, I just prefer to use this because I can throw this away when I'm finished. Um, I have used a mesh strainer before and it's really difficult to clean. Um, I use cheesecloth now. I obviously got this cheesecloth at Ace Hardware. You can find it anywhere. I've seen it at Sprouts, at Natural, Natural Grocers, it's at Walmart. Walgreens has it. Once your cheesecloth is in the funnel, you're just gonna wanna start pouring it in. Um, be careful because as these uh, particles of fat, they will weigh this cheesecloth down and it will actually fall into the mason jar. I warn you that if you don't like the smell of beef, this may not be a pleasant process for you um, because it does definitely leave your kitchen with a certain aroma. Not a bad one, I don't think. It's like, kind of like when you cook, when you cook bacon and eggs in the morning, your house smells like bacon and that's delicious. I love waking up to the smell of bacon. This just smells like beef. So maybe a cooked steak. This was actually the perfect amount. Let me get the rest of this. And I will bring my current tallow jar, which I normally would not advise you to do. I would not advise you to mix old and new tallow. Um, but in this case, I'm gonna use this fairly quickly, so I'm not worried about it. All right. We will let this strain for a little bit and then squeeze it out. This is still liquid, freshly rendered tallow. So this is all wiped off and it's gonna take quite a while to cool. So I wanna leave this uncovered because if you cover it, you're gonna create condensation on the lid, which will equate to water in your final product or at least on top of your final product. It isn't the end of the world, you can wipe it off. I'm going to cut a strip of cheesecloth off and cover it. Not that there are many flies right now because it's pretty cold outside, but dust and dog hair and all that jazz. <laughs> so. And what I'll just do is take the lid off, cheesecloth, lid. Ta -da! This is the color of lovely vitamin rich fat from grass fed cattle. So. so I'll just leave this on the counter to cool. At room temperature, it will harden to a solid. And for the rest of this, we're just going to squeeze it out carefully 
As I said earlier, this is where it is hot, so be careful with your hands. but do not throw away the remaining fat just yet. Now this is the leftover suet from the rendering pro process. This consists of like pieces of actual flesh, fat that caramelized instead of rendered down. This is good um, as like cracklings, like if you were to eat pork cracklings or chicharrones um, and you continued frying these up, these are excellent just like that or topped in salads. I'm not going to cook that up tonight. I'm just going to give it as a treat for the dogs in their dinner. But otherwise, don't toss this. It's got plenty of uses. It's actually really yummy. All right, guys. Well, that was the slow cooker method for rendering tallow. Those jars will sit on the counter until they have solidified to room temperature. And then the brand new jar that we made today will go in the fridge until the old jar is completely used. Um, like I said, that won't be long. I use it in a lot of my cooking. If you like this video, don't be afraid to like and subscribe. There will definitely be more like it. As always, thanks for joining me today, and I will see you on the next one.